The Greatest American Hero. That's a show from the late 70s, early 80s in the United States. And what's that show about? Well, it's about a ordinary person, a school teacher, who gets a suit from aliens and has to learn how to use it in order to vanquish the villains and save the world. A school teacher. And take a look at what he was wearing. He's wearing, it looks like uh, something you might sleep in. I don't know. Uh, but he had to learn how to use the suit, how to figure out how to use the, his superpowers. And then he had to learn to be comfortable in the new environment that he was operating within. So what is a hero? Well, a hero is an ordinary person doing extraordinary things. Are you a hero? Well, you might not like that word. You might think, well, you know, I'm not a hero. That's for somebody in law enforcement or that's for somebody I really look up to. But take a look at this definition. A hero is an ordinary person. Are you an ordinary person? Are you asked to do extraordinary things? What I'm going to ask you to do in this first course that you're experiencing at Orchestrate Sales is to think about yourself as a hero. And to be a hero, you need an instruction book. And I'm going to help you get that. So I'm going to help you be comfortable learning your new superpowers and then helping you be a hero inside your organization. Now, a hero to who? It's certainly not a hero to yourself. In this case, it'll be a hero to your executive team and to your company's customers. But you're gonna to have to figure out how to use your suit and your new powers to help you get there. What are those new powers? Well, they're the power of perspective. I'll share those with you. Then you'll have to write your own story, the story of orchestration. And as you put on that suit, You'll have to explore the environment around you and engage within that to overcome the hidden forces, to help people see something as possible, and also take a moment to figure out what really is happening so that you can vanquish the evil forces that exist outside your company. So the first power perspective, let's talk about that, is holistic. The second power perspective is engineered. The third power of perspective that I'll talk about is realistic. And the fourth power perspective is ongoing impact. H-E-R-O. Let's take a look. When it comes to engaging in the environment around you, sometimes it won't be pretty. Just like the school teacher who received the suit from aliens, you'll have to figure it out as you go. And that's actually critical to learning how to put on your suit, figuring it out as you go. These courses that I've built at Orchestrate Sales will help you, but you'll still have to apply yourself. You'll still have to put yourself out there and you'll still have to learn as you go. And just like this school teacher who put that suit on the first time, sometimes it won't be pretty. You might trip and fall, you might run into a few walls, and that's okay. And you know what? You might actually think you look ridiculous in this suit, and that's okay too, because you'll always find community and like-minded people at Orchestrate Sales who have done the exact same thing as you. They've learned to put on that suit and be comfortable in that superhero suit as they figured it out as they went. So the first key here is to engage and to write your first chapter. As anybody who receives a new superpower, think of it as a new chapter, a new beginning all your previous life experiences, where you've worked, who you've worked with, 
the processes you've learned, all of the knowledge you've acquired. That's awesome. But as you're experiencing these courses here at, on the Orchestrate Sales website, think of it as a new chapter. And I want to help you write that first new chapter in your superhero book. So let's talk about being holistic. Don't you hate it when you don't know what you don't know? As you engage and look at launching new initiatives, new projects, there's always new information that's coming at you. Don't you wish you knew everything? Well, in reality, you won't, and you can't. So the key is to expand your perspective, to build a network of people that help you see things differently so that you don't miss as much. You'll still miss some things, but how do you not miss as much? Expand your perspective. Also, who are you serving? As a superhero, who are you really focused on? Yourself, or are you focused on serving the people around you? Are you focused on serving sales, or customer service, or client-facing people? Or are you, are you here serving the customers of your company? Are you here to serve your executive team? the investors in your company. Well, what if you were serving all of them? It's a lot to figure out. But as long as you're focused on the right things, you can follow your intuition and follow your gut, and figure it out. Another critical part about being a superhero is having your own personal point of view and communicating your vision of what you hope for the world. Are you fighting good? Are you fighting evil? You see this play out in all movies. So what are you fighting for? What are you focused on? And how will you communicate that? I hope you'll fight for sales conversations, for making those conversations easier and simpler. And I can tell you, as you're coming into this course, your past life, before you receive this superhero suit, your past life would tell you it's very easy or all you have to do is roll out some initiatives and it's done. But as you expand your power of perspective, you'll find that that's not true. You're going to have to enable the selling system. You're going to have to make a choice between fixing salespeople or fixing the environment they operate within. Let me repeat that. Is your superhero suit designed for you to fix salespeople? Or have you received the superhero suit to help you influence the environment they operate within, to make it easier for them to be successful. As you think about the power of perspective of H, holistic, how would you enable the selling system? Well, let's talk about it. If you were to open up that instruction manual, let me give you some advice for H, for being holistic. You're going to have to spend some time and really understand who your sales teams are selling to. It's easy to say we're customer centric. It's easy to say we sell to a certain persona or target market, et cetera. But what does that really mean? How do buyers make decisions? What kind of customer, client, companies do they operate with it? What's happening inside of those companies? Do you know? What's happening within the buyer's environment? As much uncertainty and volatility as you're experiencing, what about the customer's environment? All that complexity, the ambiguity, the uncertainty, the change, people coming and going, transformation, major emergencies, things like that are happening. In order for you to impact the sales conversations that your salespeople are having, you're going to have to think holistically. You're going to have to factor in the big picture about how salespeople can be equipped and enabled to drive change across their customer's environment. So your instruction to be holistic is to bring your company's customers to life. Who are they? Can you talk about them? Can you understand what's happening in a day in their life? If I were to wave my magic wand and put you in front of your client's customers, 
what would you say? Who would you, who would you navigate to? What would be their perspective? What would be their point of view? Bring your company's customers to life. The next power of perspective is engineered. Don't you hate it when you invest a lot in your initiative, a lot of time, a lot of planning, but you don't know what the results are or what the impact is? Have you ever rolled out playbooks that the sales teams don't seem to use? Or maybe you're trying to drive goals, but nobody else seems on the same page. Or maybe you're trying to change things, you're trying to transform things but there isn't enough time to do it. How do you do that? How do you change the company from within? If you are a superhero working on the ecosystem that your salespeople operate within, how do you tackle that? It's too big, it's bigger than you. What are you supposed to do? Well, your superhero suit can help. And with this power of perspective, this E, engineered, you can learn to tackle discrete components that make a huge impact. You can focus on the 20% that drives the 80% of impact. So let's talk about what that looks like. If you were to open up that manual, what are the instructions for E, engineered? Well, first, you're going to have to generate quick wins. But those quick wins, they cannot be random. Think of quick wins as stepping stones to a broader and bigger outcome. Take the time to map out how your initiatives now serve the greater good. And think through your, your approach to launching initiatives that over time can truly move the needle around specific sales objectives. For example, if salespeople need to sell higher, you can launch a series of initiatives over time that achieve that outcome. You can't just do one thing. And you probably know that already. So you're going to have to be engineered. That means you'll have to define goals and communicate those goals on what you're really trying to achieve. You'll also have to gain important buy-in in the micro moments and the micro steps that not only help you create shared understanding, but more importantly, help you align resources. One of the things you'll find in this profession is that a lot of the work required to get things done actually happens from, with people who do not report into you. So you'll have to gain important buy-in in the micro steps and help people continuously improve what they're doing so that you can emerge to an outcome over time. The objective won't just be, hey, did we get it done? The objective will be, are we having an impact? And to have an impact, it's an ongoing evolution through micro steps and quick wins. So in that instruction manual to be engineered, take an incremental approach, take baby steps, take one step at a time, take the time to think through how these little steps equate to a bigger step or bigger outcome over time. Now let's talk about R, realistic. That's the next power of perspective. Don't you hate it when salespeople don't use what's created? I mean, have you ever been to sales kickoffs that have so much information that salespeople could not possibly actually attend everything? Or they have so many options, they don't actually know how to make a decision about what to attend. Or maybe you're uploading content to an enablement platform and you have no idea if salespeople are even using it. And if you do pull the reports and you find that they're not, what do you do about it? Or have you ever worked to create messages that you think are incredibly important only to find out that nobody's downloading them? They're not being used at all. How do you keep that from happening? Well, the content and what you produce has to be real. It has to be useful, not to you, but to the salespeople and others that you're serving. So to do that, 
to be realistic, you'll have to understand the information exchange that needs to happen. Everybody needs information. And there's so much information out there in the world. When you create new information, it's just a drop in the bucket. Where information really shines is in a specific moment when salespeople have the information they need to have a conversation or customer success agents have the information they need to help the customer navigate. Do you understand what that moment is? Do you understand what that two-way dialogue looks like? As an enablement professional, never take your eye off the conversations you're supporting and make sure you think through the information required to support those conversations. And remember, salespeople are not robots. Customer-facing employees are not robots. They won't follow a specific script. You'll have to give them information that's usable, digestible, and realistic. The more real it is, the more they'll use it. So how do you do that? How do you do that? Well, let's crack open that instruction manual and look at the instructions for R, reality. First, make sure you take a stock of the actual challenge. Write it down. The broader it is, the more complicated it will become to write down. I understand that. But you have to do the work to clearly define the problem and break it down into parts. You'll have to clarify the objective. What are you trying to do? What needle are you trying to move? How would you measure it? You'll have to clarify those objectives and again, write them down. And then from there, scope the approach that works. Not just get it done, but think through all the variables required to achieve that objective. Whether they're in scope of your function or not, what are the things required to tackle that reality? Because you can always build connections to other groups that are outside yours. How do you figure out who to talk to and what to ask for? and what relationships to establish in order to tackle that reality you're uncovering. And then perhaps most important, take an 80-20 approach. Find the low hanging fruit, find the area of greatest impact, the 20% that matters the most, and always start there. There's always more to do. The hard part is prioritizing what's the best thing to do with the limited time and resources that you have. And that's the power of this perspective, this R perspective. Keep it focused on the reality that you're trying to tackle, not somebody's wish list of what they'd like to see. To do that, you'll have to build a coalition. You'll have to build a coalition of the willing that are focused on the same reality that you're defining. A coalition of people across product, perhaps, and marketing and other sales organizations that want to come together to figure out not only what problem to solve, but also how to work together to tackle it. Others will have different resources than you. Allocating time, it will be hard. You have to find people who are willing to do it. You might need help producing some content and they have the skills and you, your team doesn't. You'll have to have a coalition of people willing to help pursue the same outcome as you. Let's talk about the last power of perspective that I'll share here in the manual. That's O for ongoing impact. Don't you hate it when the programs that you spent a year building, they start with wild fanfare, but then they fizzle out over time? Have you ever been involved in a certification program that you felt was awesome and everybody was supposed to take? but after two months, it's fizzled out and nobody's even talking about it? Or have you been involved in trying to set expectations around a new program, a new process, only to feel like it's falling on deaf ears? Or have you ever tried to get cross-functional support from other groups, but they don't seem to want to engage? And if they do engage, they don't wanna be accountable? That's a huge challenge, especially when there's so much that's dependent upon other groups. How do you navigate that? Well, the big thing is realizing that you have these powers of perspective. 
that you can put on this superhero hero suit and figure it out. This is the power of the enablement role is to think about yourself as an orchestrator. And that's really what this whole class is about. Taking control of your own destiny to figure out how to orchestrate these things and make them happen. The techniques, the tools, the approaches, figuring that out over time, not through this course, but through the, what this course asks you to go do by taking action, by learning, by doing, to take control of your own destiny. To do that, let's take a look at the instruction manual section for O, ongoing impact. What you'll learn through the content at Orchestrate Sales is we view enablement very much like a service not only providing service, but running as a service. Think about being a service provider and sales and customer service and other teams that engage with you. They have the ability and the discretion to choose whether or not to opt into your service or not. Just like you have the ability to choose what airline you're going to travel on. You have to think like a service provider. And that means you'll have to build your own accountability for results. You'll have to build accountability in your core team and extended team to work together to provide the service that drives outcomes. Then you'll have to position and sell those services inside your company. And you'll learn more about what that looks like in other orchestrate sales content. But to sell your services, you'll have to learn how to position them as different and unique from the perhaps random activities that many people want. They want the individual training or they want the specific best practice that they heard about from another company. You'll have to educate people internally on the impact that you're trying to achieve through the services that you provide. And then you'll have to show, show what wins and tell people what wins. You'll have to broadcast your success. That will help you gain momentum and create a positive flywheel over time. To achieve that, the instruction manual is to operate like a startup, to think of your function as a startup function over again, even if it's been around for a while, to engage with a new perspective, to think things through in order to improve your startup. Operating like a startup allows you to think through not only the individual processes, but what's required to be successful, and also puts a sense of urgency into what you're doing so that you push yourself and the team to evolve and continuously improve. So there are other powers of perspective that are in the handouts. There's actually an acronym of being heroic, H-E-R-O-I-C. I'm sharing here today the powers of H-E-R-O. But there's a download, there's a PDF you can grab that has I and C. Being impactive and collaborative are two other components of being heroic to your executive team. In this particular opening section, I talked about bringing the customer to life. H, taking an incremental approach. E, building a coalition of the willing. R, and operating like a startup. To do that, you'll have to think through for H, how to make buyer decisions and define buying patterns. For E, defining the goal and gaining buy-in and continuously improving. For R, clarifying objectives and following 80-20. And O, building accountability and selling your services so that you can become a superhero and eventually say, don't you love it when we're able to ask the right questions, when we're able to deliver the right incremental results? And more importantly, we're building the credibility. We're building our own personal brand to be heroic and make an impact. Now that all might sound great. And it might actually make you want to think. But what, do you, what are your thoughts about receiving this instruction manual, H-E-R-O? Do you want to be a hero? 
how would you process that? I'm going to give you a choice. As you can probably tell, this course is not like a traditional course. I'm going to ask you to think. I'm going to share new information. I'm going to ask you to engage. I'm going to ask you to go do some things and learn that way. This is not a traditional course that spoon feeds you content. I want you to think of this more as a quest. And I'm making an invitation. Does that superhero that I just shared, that school teacher, that ordinary person that's asked to do extraordinary things, does that person relate to you? You're going to have to choose to open one of these doors. The world of orchestration is all around you. Even now, as you're starting this quest, you can see it when you look in your inbox, you can see it when you go to your next meeting, you can feel it when you go to work. If you choose these door, the blue doors, you're gonna be like a lot of people out there. You'll be shackled to the old way, doing your own thing, but with the everyday thinking that the business world is just not like it seems. Knowing the truth, you'll still be trapped in what everybody else is doing. That's the worst thing that could happen and most people in enablement experience it every day. I don't want that for you. I want you to choose one door or the other. You're either in or you're out. The choice is yours. You have to see it for yourself. If you're in and you choose the red door, you're going to be asked to engage much like a quest and a superhero on the quest to figure out how to use your new superpowers. You'll be asked to learn by doing, to find the path. You will not be spoon fed that. You'll have to engage in the world around you and put yourself out there. I can't just tell you what it is. Is that what you want? Is that what you're looking for? Do you want that adventure? If you don't, choose the blue door and simply exit this course. Nobody will know but you and you can go about the way things are now. If you open the red door, you'll begin to see the world of orchestration. It will test you, but I'll be with you along the way. It will be a path of adventure and it'll be different than what you think. So what door will you choose? The choice is up to you.